nice to see you. <laughs> yeah, it's so good to see you and hear you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I have to say it's uh, it's really special that you find the time to talk to us because I know how busy you've been in the last couple of weeks and uh, you just organized uh, a very successful ATP event. So wanted to ask you on that, given the situation we are in, for organizer, how tough it is to plan things and make events like that happen? Well, uh, it's very difficult at the moment, I think every tournament organizer know how it is and I think all the players really appreciate all the work that the tournaments are doing. So yeah, we, we tested like every three days more than thousand people. We had tennis players in the bubble. I mean, we managed to finish the tournament. We had some issues, but at the end everything worked out well. But yeah, it's a lot, a lot of work, much more than in normal situations. So we really hope that soon, Hopefully already next year we're going to have normal tournaments and everything will be back. So let's hope. <laughs> Do you see a different mental approach in the players uh, probably appreciating things a little bit more and being much more aware and respecting each other? Oh, for sure. You see a lot more respect. I mean, appreciation, definitely. Maybe in their tournaments it's not such a big change because anyway you stay inside. So the hotel we have is beautiful. They have the gym that they can use. They have a nice area to eat. The courts are, you know, adjustable to them. So I think they felt very comfortable, but definitely they do respect each other more and the tournaments more and the tournament organizers. You can really feel it. And, you know, I think every bad thing happened for a reason and maybe everyone will appreciate things differently in the future. Let's go back to this Roland Garros this year. Obviously, uh, what a story uh, for Iga Swiatek, winning the tournament at the same age as you were when you won yes. your Roland Garros title. Uh, just talk us a little bit through the emotions, what it felt like for you, and also, you know, how amazed you were by Iga. Yeah, first uh, talking about Iga, I'm very impressed uh, about her game and, you know, I was very excited to watch her throughout the tournament and she was in, winning her matches pretty easy, very, like, feeling very confident. So, you know, she actually did remind me a little bit of myself at the year that I won, even her game style and everything. So I was really, really excited for her. Yeah, it does bring the memories back. I mean, you don't even think about the age. And probably until the French Open posted it, I didn't even realize that I was the youngest player that won it. Martina being so young that year, I mean, she was 37-0 until coming to French Open finals. She was only 16, and we had such a young generation those days with you and the rest of the girls. So nobody really thought 16, 18, you know, everything was very young. But yeah, I brought the memory back how, how old I actually am. <laughs> oh. Uh, <laughs> very, very special time for me, 20 plus years ago. And uh, yeah, just happy every year that I come back to Roland Garros. This year I was there. It was sad uh, seeing it the way it was this year. But again, well done for Roland Garros to putting up the event in such a difficult year. And I think Iga has an amazing career in front of her. And uh, I actually think we have an amazing new generation coming up. So I'm looking forward for the next couple of years. I think it's going to be a lot of rivalry between the girls. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned the generations. wanted to ask you, why do you think that is that our generation was uh, so young? I mean, like you said, you winning Roland Garros at 19, Martina doing so well at 16. Um, it, it almost, she actually made us feel like when you won a tournament at 19, that's like old. Why yeah. do you think uh, we were able to be so successful so early? Well, I think we were just a different generation. I don't know, was it more discipline, uh, uh, more, you know, smaller teams? Uh, I'm not going to say it was more work, but it's, it was definitely very different. And it was very young generation. There were lots of superstars which maybe we missed the last couple of years on the tour because other than Serena maybe and Maria, we missed those superstars. So I'm happy, I'm happy that uh, with Naomi Osaka and a few other girls, uh, you know, this is coming back because tennis needs that. We need some new young superstars coming up. And I think in this generation, we do have that with Coco Goff. 
everybody's talking about her. Yes, in our generation, 16, 17 was normal. <laughs> now she's a really, really, really young uh, girl, but it's great and it's great. And uh, I think now generations play longer, which is also a good thing. So what's really better? It's hard to say. Maybe this is even better because the girls are able to mature a little bit and then play longer, which maybe, yeah, it would be great maybe if we did it, you know, the same. I think most of us between 26 and 30, we retire, which now I think they keep playing until mid-30s, which I think they're more mature, they're feeling good with their bodies. So, yeah, I think this is also not a bad thing. Um, you know, everyone talks about for Iga how her life has changed now. What are some of the challenges uh, since you can relate really to her age that you had to face after Roland Garros that, uh, you know, we, we don't see, we, don't, we can't expect? Yeah, well, definitely things change. You're not an underdog anymore. Like I think, especially me for that final, I think Martina was sure winner. And here I can play the best, best match of my life. So, yeah, after that, things change dramatically. And I think most of us are not ready for this big change. And I think that's why, you know, there are players like Roger and Rafa and Serena who can handle these things, like, amazingly. And then there are, again, players who can handle them, but maybe not 100%. And I think this is where our team is very important where you really have to balance what's important to do and what's not, because every little thing you do takes out your energy, your mind from tennis. And, uh, you know, there will be a lot of underdogs who want to be Tiga in the near future. And, you know, now she's going to show her strength. And, uh, of course, you have to do others too. So this is where, you know, you really show how, how your mental toughness is. I had... I had hard time dealing with a lot of those issues and of course it didn't help my tennis talking about focusing just on tennis do you think uh, the social media in today's uh, player life may be one of the reasons why we don't see more of a dominance of one player because the focus and energy goes to too many different directions oh definitely i mean i think this is a definitely big issue with this generation i mean i see it with my daughter and I see it all the youngsters. I mean, this is 80% of their lives, you know, having Twitters, TikToks, Instagrams, everything. And of course, it takes so much energy out of you and so much, you know, you lose that focus, which in a little way is good, but I think it becomes like a big part of your life that uh, I think makes a big distractions. So as a incredible coach and a Fed Cup captain as well, what would be your advice to the players how to balance that social media world with uh, being as professional as possible as a player well i think you cannot put social media away this is just a new life we're living in what i do at fed cup we try not to use phones breakfast lunch and dinner and also one or two hours during the day so we have time to talk because these kids actually are not used to talking so you have to kind of teach them how to have conversations and I think with, with these new generations, I think they, will, they would have to try to have some time with their team, you know, to talk about their game, to talk about the plan, and to put, you know, these distractions on the side. And I think it would help any of these new young generations who is coming up. Well, talking about conversations, this was an incredible chat, Eva. Thank you so much for your time. The very last question, if you can sum up what has been your most favorite memory of your Roland Garros? Wow. <laughs> well, it must be that, you know, holding that trophy <laughs> after the finals. I mean, it's always been my favorite tournament. And since I was 15, I had that uh, round match with Steffi Graf, very close match. And since then, I always did well. So I think winning for our European players, you know, growing on red clay, I think this is the most special moment of my, my career, not just Roland Garros. So yeah, it must have been that moment. Thanks for chatting to us, Eva. Thank you and hope to see you soon. Stay safe all. <laughs>